Eyes on Air Museum has just launched its Museum in a Million Appeal. They're after money to secure the future of this fascinating educational museum. It's celebrating its 125th birthday this year, so let's go inside and have a look, see what they've got. So, can we have a look and see what's in the galleries? Yeah, I'll take you up this way. Thank you. So, we're starting from the very beginning here then, obviously, Absolutely. beginning to the solar system. Um, how long has this display been here? Is it a fairly... This has been here since the early 2000s. Um, the, the museum was lucky enough to get a heritage lottery grant at that time to redo the galleries, which have been here since um, about the 1950s, 1960s. Okay. These are beautiful. Look at these. Why are we here? So he would have had a tray rested on his arms right. and drinks would have been put on there obviously when the people were having parties and the guests would have helped themselves. Um, yeah, he's from Russia. Oh, right. Russia, from Virginia. We can't film in this bit because it's too dark, but just round this corner is one of the museum's most famous inhabitants, the Egyptian mummy. If you want to see him, you have to come and have a look yourself. And this is all more social history here, so there's all sorts of stuff from different wild cultures. And this is a fascinating one here. Artifacts from Hazelmere, including a section of the famous hindhead gibbet from which criminals were hanged. Okay. And Kate's going to show us some of the things they've got in store out the back. So what, what have you got here, Kate? What, what, what well, this got in this is version? our oversized section of the museum's collections. Um, and this is predominantly made up of our peasant art collection. Um, so these are objects that come from northern Europe and were collected in the late 19th century by a man called Gerald Davis, who wow. was um, a master at Charthouse School in Godalming. Okay. Um, and in his school holidays, he travelled around Europe and collected these pieces. Basically, he believed that these um, home crafts were dying out, and so he was interested in preserving them, so he was bringing them back here oh, to preserve them. So we've got things like babies' cradles oh, and benches and tables and boxes and bowls. So we've got shelves here of natural history including um, shells, fossils, all sorts of stuffed creatures. What have we got down this side Kate? What, what, what do we have um, to start here? Here we've got lots of fossils um, of different creatures. Mm -hmm. um, most interestingly is probably the large ammonites down there and also a dinosaur footprint. And this side we've got um, the, the bird collection. Um, it's a vast bird collection which actually used to be um, on display within this very room before it got turned into uh, into stores. So now we've only unfortunately we've only got a small proportion out on display. Right. Um, Did these all come from one collector as far as you're aware or have they sort of appeared over the course of the years? No, a lot of them came from one collection. Right. Um, man called Colonel French mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them were shot and um, stuffed up in Norfolk. Okay. Um, because it's a question of space to a certain extent isn't it because how many how many items do you have in total we in the have museum, roughly? We have about 400,000 items okay. in the museum um, so yes it's definitely a question of gallery space mm -hmm. and also I suppose time and that's where our special exhibitions come into their own course, so we can course. able to sort of showcase parts yeah. of the collection yeah. during the year. And there is an opportunity for people to come and have a look here by appointment with you, is that correct? Definitely. If they um, want to phone us up or drop mm -hmm. us an email, we're more than happy to arrange a convenient yeah. time for them to come in and look at the collections. This is a 
another fabulous space at the museum, the garden, which is very popular in the spring and summer with families. We've got all sorts of things going on here throughout the year and a couple of rather interesting features. Kate, the gazebo over there, what, what's that all about and what, what's behind it? Well, the gazebo there is a lovely spot for looking out over the museum pond. Right. Um, we actually have pond dipping workshops here with school children sometimes. Um, and at the end of your visit, you might still have time and energy to have a look at the shop. It's a fabulous thing.